2022 has been and gone, but its games remain, and boy did we have some good ones. We're going to count down my top 5 personal picks for the year, as well as a few honourable mentions. And we'll kick things off with those honourable mentions, starting with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. This game was a lot of fun, a good short beat em up with a great soundtrack, awesome pixel art, and just a fantastic time the whole way through, as well as some good visual gags and throwbacks to the 80s cartoon. It just nails everything that it tries to be, and I can see why a lot of people had fun with it. Next up, Warhammer 40,000 Shooter's Blood and Teeth. You play as an orc storming through a human hive and just wreaking havoc, and it's even more fun with a friend. I played it live on Twitch with my friend and moderator Bone God, and we had a fantastic time, even if we did encounter some glitches. It also had a fun little versus mode that we just played around with for a bit, where you can shoot each other up and stuff and earn points, and that was great too. And to finish things off, Swordship, a game where you are trying to make everything else shoot and destroy each other while trying to deliver packages across an ocean. It was a really, really cool little concept, and I love the way that you don't actually attack, but you get everything else to attack each other. It's a very unique concept, and I think it has a lot of potential, so you should check it out. With the honorable mentions out of the way, let's jump into our number five pick. Wanna play a game that's Castlevania Simon's Quest, but actually good? Infernax is your ticket to that. And Boy, did they amp up the theme, gore, the puzzles, the combat, everything about the game just oozes patience and perfection. I found it to be an extremely satisfying sort of Metroidvania RPG, and the theming and everything was just so well done. I cannot emphasize how awesome the pixel art was, and just how satisfying the general gameplay loop was. Also, the soundtrack was nothing to sneeze at. It did a really, really good job of setting the mood, and I honestly think that Infernax should go down as one of those greats. Now on to number four. Ever watch a martial arts movie like The Raid, and want to be able to control a character with that kind of martial arts prowess, and being able to interact with the environment in interesting ways? Well, Sifu's got you covered there. With what I considered a very interesting aging mechanic, where you got stronger, but weaker in terms of how much damage you could take as your run went on, and the level up system where you got to choose either really good bonuses for that run, or slowly building up more permanent ones that help you throughout future runs, it had a really good mix of that. While not perfect in the camera having the odd issue, I found myself really enjoying this game and the bosses were all quite memorable. If you haven't picked up Sifu and had a look but action games like this interest you, I highly suggest checking it out. You won't be disappointed. On to number three. And this one goes to Vampire Survivors. A very, very interesting bullet hell where you, that's right, you are the bullet hell. And I have to say, I initially didn't get it. When I saw people playing this, I was like, what is this? I, I, I don't get the appeal. You just move about and shoot things and that's about it. But turns out there's a bit more under the surface. There's some interesting builds you can create. The grimoire allows you to combine certain things into super power-ups, and I have to say that the enemy variety is actually pretty cool, and some of the entries for the beast area are hilarious. Check out the milk elemental. <laughs> I've never seen so many puns in such a small paragraph. But I have to say that the game's characters, unlocks, constant progression, you always feel like you're getting towards something is really good, and they experiment with some funny stuff. And for the price of a cup of coffee, you can't go wrong. Vampire survivors, remember, you're the bullet hell, so send all your enemies to it. And now for our number two pick. Our number two spot became a worldwide obsession with its release. That's right, we're talking about the one, the only, Elden Ring. This game impacted everyone, even those that weren't into Souls games started playing it. My brother, who's never been into that sort of thing, has picked it up and hasn't been able to put it down, and that says something. The exploration, the map, the builds, the sheer discovery, and an open world where there's interesting things everywhere you go, but you're not bombarded with quests and little things. You pick up stuff and decide where to go and what to do with it. You can tackle bosses in the order you want. If you find things too tough in one area, come back later, there's plenty of other places to explore. 
there is so much to discover, and just when you think you've seen like most of the map, it just keeps expanding. It is massive. Very few people have managed to fully finish this game, and I think it'll be a while before anyone does. But I have to say that my mind was absolutely blown when I made it to a certain spot and found out the map was a lot bigger than I thought it was. That's right. Even when you think you've seen everything, the game has more that it throws at you, and it just keeps getting better. The bosses are interesting, and while people claim that there's a lot more copy-paste and stuff going on with the game, it has many more unique bosses than so many games on their own just have. Yes, the little dungeons have some copy-paste ones with some slight changes of abilities and things, but when you have this much content, I think that's fine. Elden Ring takes my number two spot, and it is well deserved. And now, for our number one. This game took my number one spot, and given its combination of mechanics, theme, and everything else, it probably doesn't surprise anyone who truly knows me. And that's Marvel's Midnight Suns. That's right, a tactical card game with some Persona-style relationship stuff in between is what took my game of the year. I've been having non-stop fun with it, and honestly, the combat is so satisfying. The way that the cards and things interact with the environment, being able to throw people into explosive barrels, the intricate little mission details that allow you to approach things in a different way, the card drawing system, and everything else was just great. It has some cosmetic stuff, and um, you earn so much stuff to unlock them in-game that it is not an issue at all and I honestly found the dialogue, while a little cringy for some people and stuff, and I totally get it, as someone who reads comic books, I loved just how cheesy things got. Having Iron Man and Doctor Strange bicker in the forge is fantastic, you know, referring to him as Doctor Spooky and things. It's great. You earn cards through playing missions and other resources and such, and you train up and gain friendship with your allies, which give you benefits. The mechanics are really, really tight and well done, and every single character you get in your team feels unique and adds their own flavor to the battle. Visually, yes, it's let down on a few aspects, but I think in battle, and especially with the animations and effects they put in, it flourishes. Some of Doctor Strange's techniques are some of the most beautiful looking things I have seen come from a comic book page into a video game in a long time. And while it's not an action game like a lot of people were hoping it would be, it ended up being something I love. I'm into my tabletop games, and so this combination of tactics, strategy, and cards really did it for me. And that is why it took my game of the year for 2022. If you're wondering where God of War Ragnarok is, I haven't played it yet. It's on my list of things to do, but there were so many things toward the end of the year. But let me know what your favourite games were in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye now!